So, this is the current setup here. Um, it's a 8.5 10 boat. And this is the. Uh, so that's, that's at the. This is at the spot I'm going to measure. So that's zero. Hold that collar down there, Jeremy, which is really a two-man job. When we're checking the straightness on it, lock that back in, Jeremy. When we're checking the straightness on it, these ends are locked in. I mean, so then you can check the run out in the shaft without it being any wobble. When you get ready to balance it, you unlock these ends on it, and this shaft will float back and forth. And it's got dial indicators on the back here. So you'll see the needles on it. You see how it moves whenever the shaft's... Mm -hmm. Vibrating. All right, back in a second, I'm gonna spin it up, and then we'll you can look at these. See the needle on it. Seventeen hundred, two thousand RPMs. That's the way the balance is on both ends. You see the other side over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the balancing process. We went ahead and balanced it up, but what we would do is, is take a reading where it indicated vibration, and then we add weight to compensate, just like balancing a wheel or a tire. Mm -hmm. and then we balance it out smooth like you see here, mm -hmm. and that's at all RPMs. You crank it up, and it'll stay the same. That's perfectly smooth. It's good to go. Mm -hmm. All I got to do is pull it out and wipe it down for you, and it'll be ready to go. Okay. Fixtures that we use to balance it to simulate the differential yoke, the pinion yoke on the differential. You see, there's all different types to fit all different type applications. And the collars up on the top left are what simulate the extension housing pushing on the transmission to fit all different types. The front one is a crossover joint because, um, <clears throat> This is 14, this one don't have a grease fitting on. Okay. This is because it's a conversion joint. This is 1410 series, and this is 1350 series. Reason is, is they don't make a yoke to fit three and a half inch tubing in 1410 series. Like I told you, this is designed to be in some big stuff, so generally mm -hmm. this shaft would have to be massive. Mm -hmm. And using this conversion joint, and Dwayne's got you the pinion yoke for the rear differential, mm -hmm. then we can keep the strength rating on these are the same. The difference is the width of them. Okay. But by converting it to 1350 here, it makes it where we can build the three and a half inch aluminum shaft for it. Okay. But this is the pin that it's got that goes on the back of it. This is what you'll be bolting to the rear. This is considerably stronger than what you have on there, mm. on there now. This will be the new yoke that bolts on there, and then this is the strap and bolt kit that'll hold it all together. So once you get the dry shaft installed and this yoke on there, this is what you'll use to hold it all together. Well, looks like we got everything to get it, get it put in there. <laughs> Man, that's <old>. Nice. <laughs> Alright, can we go grab those stickers real quick? Just cover over the end of it. Protect this. So now we're moving to replacing the yoke so we can receive the new dry. be interesting so please don't mind me I am simply making my 1 and 5 16 thin wall sockets it seems like the only thin wall sockets that's available is on the west coast of north so um, I'm not gonna wait any longer to do this job so I'm just grinding this five, 1 and 5 16 um, socket down and, uh, 
One thing I need to do is just hand tighten it. Or just, I'm not going to use all force. So, anyway. Don't judge me.